Hello, welcome to Gen Bio. Today we're going to be talking about population ecology. We're going to talk about how populations vary through time and how populations grow and decline and how different variables affect that. Okay, so let's go to the textbook and look at some idealized survivorship curves. So if you take a look at uh, this particular graphic out of our textbook, along the y-axis you have number of survivors, and this is on a logarithmic scale, so all of the, the survivors can be shown. And on the x-axis you have percentage of maximum lifespan, and so you'll see this varies from 0 to 100. And so this is the number of individuals that are going to survive past this point. So at this point, 100% of the individuals will uh, perish. So with type 1 organisms, you see this high survival rate for a very long time, and then at some point, this drops off dramatically. And so most of the individuals within this population die within the time span shown at the very end of the x-axis here. If there are individuals where it doesn't, uh, where survival or mortality is the same through time, so they're just as likely to die when they're very young as when they're middle-aged as when they're older, and those are type 2 organisms. So on here there are also pictures of representative organisms of type 1, which are humans, and type 2, these uh, gophers, and then or ground squirrels, and then type 3, the oysters. And so type 3 individuals, they suffer very high mortality early on in their lifespan. So very young individuals are much more likely to die, and once they reach a certain age, they uh, are more likely to live. Okay, and so the type 1 and type 3 survivorship curves are in direct contrast to each other. Okay, with that, let's go ahead and draw this on the overhead so that you uh, get an idea of how to do this. So, again, on your x axis, you're going to be representing the number of survivors. Okay, and again it's going to be on a logarithmic scale with 1 at the base, 10, 100, and then 1,000. And then along the x-axis you have the percentage of maximum lifespan. And again, this can be 80 years, it can be 1 year, or it can be 1 month. So this is just representing uh, the percentage of the maximum lifespan. So let's put 0, and 50%, and then 100%. And so again, type 1 individuals generally have high survivorship through their young and middle age spans, and then at some point this drops off dramatically. Okay? So that is type 1. And this is represented by humans and elephants are another type 1 organism. And then you have organisms that their mortality, their susceptibility to mortality is the same whether they're very young or at 50% of their maximum lifespan or 100% of their maximum lifespan. And those are type 2 organisms, again represented by these ground squirrels. And then lastly, we have these type 3 organisms that suffer very high mortality when they're very young. And then this tapers out 
as they uh, reach their maximum lifespan. So within type 3 organisms, there are very few that are found uh, in their population that are older, so that are within this uh, maximum lifespan. So again, very high mortality when they're young. Whereas it is just the opposite with type 1, where they have very low mortality. And if you think about the organisms that are representing these type 1, you see that they uh, care for their offspring. So elephants and humans, they both take very good care of their offspring. Whereas with oysters, which were the type 3 representative, there's no care for the young. And so very high mortality when they're young. Okay, with that, let's go to the next uh, topic, which is going to be looking at growth rates or growth curves through time for different populations of organisms. So let's look again at the textbook, and we will look at two types of population growth models. So on here, if you look at the, the y-axis, you have population size. So at any point in time, individuals of the same species that are interacting within an area is a population. And the population size can vary based on the land area and the resources available. And so if you're thinking about a particular habitat, generally it can only support a certain number of individuals because there's always going to be limiting resources. And so the limiting resources is represented by K here. So K is what is called the carrying capacity. So an ecologist define this carrying capacity as the maximum population that a particular habitat can actually support. And so you see on here Here's the number of generations on the x-axis. So zero generations, five generations, 10 and 15. And two population growth models are represented on here. So the blue line represents exponential growth, which would indicate that there were no limiting resources within a population. And so the population can just grow and grow and grow and grow. Whereas the red line is indicating this logistic growth curve where a population grows and then eventually levels out along that carrying capacity. And so when animals are reintroduced, it's a fantastic opportunity to look at this exponential growth or, the, or whether the population is going to experience the logistic growth. And there's several examples in the textbook of this. And I think this is a lovely example here with paramecium as well as Daphnia in the lab. So here with paramecium, it was a beautiful following of this logistic growth curve. So paramecium were inoculated into an environment or a habitat. And then the population grew over time. So time is on the x-axis and number of paramecium is on the y-axis. And so through time, you see that the numbers of paramecium grew. In contrast, when you look at the same experimental setup with Daphnia, the number of Daphnia grew and then popped up over and then dropped back down. And so this is often seen where when organisms are introduced into a new habitat, they will overshoot their carrying capacity but then mortality will occur and they will drop back down. And this little drop below is also something you see often in that they've kind of overused their resources and it takes a little bit to come back up to this carrying capacity. And so this is a, a very lovely example of this, uh, the population growth in the lab. Okay, and with that, that is going to conclude our overview of population ecology and some of the uh, growth rates of populations in new environments. And 
please take a look at the text and look at some of the factors that can influence the carrying capacity. Thank you.